Oh, man, you mind if I bring a prowler? Also, SKL, anybody interested in learning some more ins and outs and some tactics about armor, I do have a platoon up, and that is what we are going to be dedicated to for the next little while, is essentially just teaching you guys. Seven o'clock. Let's go ahead and get started. Thank you all for joining me. I run these pretty regularly, so I don't really expect the numbers to be large, but Lindira, Horus, Hyperlight, thank you. Now then, I think we're going to go over some of Esimir, especially the new containment sites. So if everyone will go ahead and redeploy with me over to the Envari containment site, it will be Squad, or yeah, Alpha Squad Waypoint. I just got here. What's going on? We're going to go to Envari Containment Site and kind of go over the layout. Awesome. I'm already here. Logan screen won't go. There we go. All right, so I'm in. Hi. At, hello. As far as the, the all the containment sites go, they're identical. Uh, the, the main thing I want to go over is B A attacking a containment site and B defending a containment site. Defending a containment site is much easier than attacking it, and that's why they're being co compared to bio labs right now. So generally speaking. The best way to attack a containment site from the enemy is to hop on all three points to lock us down in our spawn. Where I just came in as our spawn, a lot of the fighting, a lot of the blueberries will literally all of these great straight forward, and that leads an arm in the center. Uh, the easiest way to break this kind of deadlock is literally to just go left or right from here. Uh, the enemy just does not have enough people, generally, to buy a big farm and hold the edges and like literally if we go down this hallway that direction leads to c point or you could just keep going and this direction will also just lead to c point and this is the problem with the containment sites there's these ducks right here that add extra complications but i mean imagine you're the defending platoon and you think you you think to yourself we'll hold them at a and sure, a lot of the blueberries will go there, but even a half squad I have seen go this direction and just literally kind of flank around the fight, and then all of a sudden you're at C point. Really, it's a hard thing to conceptualize because a lot of Zergs will just funnel into where the fighting is. But this is what makes it so easy to hold. It's just literally the enemy has to get through all these shield gates. They have to hold down A, B, and C, and then try to force a fight by A. And even once you take C or B, the whoever took C or B can literally do a crash from right here. And this takes you into the side of where they would be at A, and we could literally just pitch into the enemy from a weird angle onto A right here. We can't actually go through that because it's closed, but you get what I'm saying. They would be in there if they were t holding, trying to hold that point room, and just taking C point or B point and then dropping down through that little latch right there literally flanks the A point. That's one of the problems with attacking the containment site as well. The other problem with attacking the containment come with me and I'll show you. Alright, 
I'd say that's about far enough. So the other problem with attacking the containment site is that we just ran for a solid 10, 15 seconds of silence, and we're still only about halfway through the facility. The closest spawn is going to be a Sunderer, which means we're going to have to run for another 15 seconds to get up there to even find wherever the nearest Sunday location is. And the most important aspect of this game, like a lot of a lot of people are like KDA, KDA, or like, oh, my Mag Rider started out or whatever. Honestly, the most important aspects of this game is the time you spend alive versus the time you spend running. And if the best Sunderer locations at a base are a solid 30, 45 second run to where the fight's going to be, we have a problem. So what's the solution to that problem? Any answer? Oh, that is much. Yeah, Lanier got it. The, no, there's no I, name change. It my, uh, let me let Waspy get done talking. You are a character. The, in, in my opinion, the only real easy way right now to crack a base like this are, route, are routers. At least one, preferably two, on B and C, because the time that you are spending running from the Sunderer to the fight is just unacceptable on this base. This is one of the reasons why um, some bases like, let's say, Howling Pass on Indar or um, Madison's on this, pl on this continent are so hard to take is because if you cannot get a good Sunderer spawn to stick, then the time you spend running to fighting... Uh, if the enemy does a crash and kills half the platoon and the, they can't get rezzed, that's literally the platoon at half strength for 45 seconds. And on a base like this, where once they they break through into the A or they take C or B, that could just be the death sentence for the entire attack. So mm -hmm. what you yeah what you need to do on this base. Oh, oh, and another thing that sucks about this base is that it's all underground. So one of the other things that we could do to help with this is our no, yeah, we cannot use beacons here. So if we cannot use beacons and the Sunder responds are bad, really need to, if you have to attack a containment site as a platoon lead, ask if you have any router runners. Because, like I said, we're a solid 45 seconds away from the near Sunday spawn. A router runner can literally put a router anywhere on C or B. Like, the, there are solid spots all over the place. Um, the C point on these facilities are pretty good. You just put them like up against this terminal right here, put a couple hard light barriers at a diagonal, and you have a you know a router position. The other good thing about router position, remember when I was talking about how whenever uh, people uh, a Zerg spawns in here and they kind of just funnel straight down the hallway into the A point farm, kind of like a bio lab. The other good thing about the, uh, having routers on C and B is that it disperses the blueberries evenly throughout the facility. So if, let's just pretend that Horus is the router. So I'm just a random blueberry that said, saw, hey, and there's a router here. Oh, this is cool. And now, instead of funneling to A, he might be going, oh, I'm just going to go this way. And just this random blueberry running off to the side helps protect the flanks of whatever farm is going up. So not only is it helping the platoon attack the facility, but it's also spreading our blueberries around evenly. I'm sorry. Creosis, uh, you had something you wanted to say? You actually can use beacons in the space. Through the center, if you have the uh, attempt to siphon off, you can come into the A point through there. Yeah, yeah, you, you can do that. I would not rely on that, but it is a thing that can be done. If you put a beacon down in the uh, in the chute on the A point with the siphon down, you need to be very clear to your squad mates not to deviate their trajectory at all. Because you know when you come down you can you know you can guide your, your pod a little bit. If you do do that, which I'm not I would not depend on that at all, but it's it's not there's no reason not to do it I guess. If you do do that, make sure make clear that they should not move if they come down because there is not much margin for error there and then they're just on top of the facility. All right, does anyone have any questions specifically about the containment sites? Did you use an anvil down the siphon tube or is that too small? Yes. Is there any yeah, practical I've... reason to use it? 
I I'm not sure. You can well, barely get a flash through the. Yeah, I, was, I, I think it's just a flash. Or hold on a second. Yeah, you can drop them all three down the chute. It's just getting through the tubes into the A is only flash sized. Yeah. So I mean, there, that's kind of like a like a, a you know a, a cute thing that you can do. It's not like it's not good or bad. Um, if you have like a scout radar flash, sure. But it's not really going to help you take the base on like a you know like a tactical level. It uh, it might be too much effort to get a flash down and to drive it down the hallway to where it could be useful over just participating in the battle yourself while you try to get that to happen. Any other questions about the containment side? It's a good question. Uh, if, if it was a little bigger, the hallways were a little bigger, there could be an argument for like, you know, like a sneaky lightning or a harasser or something, but uh, it flashes pretty much all you can do. Any other questions regarding the containment site? I do agree with you, though. We do need to focus more on our people getting routers into these bases because I've yep. capped these bases many times. Never seen a router ever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's uh, it, tricky. Exactly. I've seen it four times. Yeah, if you guys are running a platoon or running a squad, like honestly, if it's the only good play, I guess you can slog here for twenty minutes and and maybe eventually you know take the base, but. In any situation where there is another play, I would just avoid the containment sites. Like, unless you have router runners. If you ask if there's router runners in your platoon and no one is saying anything, then I would just avoid containment sites because they are a pain in the ass. Like, even compared to, like, Watersons or Mattersons, I just think that the have such potential to waste so much of your time and, and ruin the cohesion. Yeah, they, they, it, yeah, because there, there are there are tips and tricks I can give you about like Mattersons or Watersons or um, Aaron BL four that would help you take those bases. With this base, it's literally have router runners, other or, and 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 you know cross your fingers. Yeah, and not at one. It's not enough. Yeah, I, I would say two on C and B, but I mean if you can if you only have one. You know, wait one side of the facility. You know, a, a C point router will definitely make sure C and A are clear, and then you just have to worry about B. So, and another important thing is, if you do have router runners, protect those routers. Like, put an entire squad on defending the C point and its router, and an entire squad defending the B point and its router, and then you can throw Charlie and Delta into A, and then you have this entire facility on on lockdown. If you have a squad with a router on C, a squad with a router on B, and then two squads on A in the farm, then this base probably is not that hard to take, but you have the tech. Now, very briefly, where's somewhere we can go that's not going to us getting killed? Yeah, let's go to Watersons real quick. I kind of want to show Watersons while we have the time. Uh, there's not a ton of people there, but, you know, we might have to do some fighting, but that's... Everyone go ahead and redeploy, please. It's heavy overpop, though. And uh, we're, we're one person short of being completely full. If you want to open up another squad so we can keep joining. Yeah, I'll open up another squad in just a second. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll pull a gal and just uh, we can just fly into there. All right, gals up. We're saying C and B, no A. Yeah, C and B, no A, because A is the um, the Tempest Siphon room, and it's usually the room where the blueberries are farming them at their spawn anyway. So what, what we want to do on all of these bases is we want to determine where are the regulars, the regular blueberries, the, the regular people that we have no control over, where are they going to go, and then we need to shore up their weakness. So where they are going to go on any base inevitably is where the farm is at, and where the farm is at on the containment sites is a point trying to keep them in their spawn. But as I illustrated when we spawned in there pretending to be defenders, it's not hard to break that. All you have to do is just not have tunnel vision on the ape. Go left or right, 
any number of duct systems or uh, or hallways and get to see in from any number of directions. Like, not difficult. So we need to... Do what? Can you actually put a router on that duct? You put a router on that duct? That's simple. Alright, go ahead and drop. Drop, drop, drop. Alright, if, if anybody sees any reclaimable vehicles, please let me know, because I want to use my diffuser tool. Gotcha. Alright, so on water systems, if everyone just hits the M key real quick, I just want to go over the base real fast. Uh, up to the top left of D uh, is a good Sunday spot. Uh, to the bottom left of C are good Sunday spots. Uh, the main thing is that you want to go over with at Watersons is you want to make sure that no one is putting Sunday spots at put that squad waypoint or fire team waypoint. In, any of these waypoints I'm putting down, we do not want Sundays at because these have the dual bad thing, and this is for attacking the base. That is, these have the dual uh, n bad thing of making it to where whenever our guys spawn, they have to run a long way to get to a gate or find a way into the base from there, either through light assault or through some... Again, this is the runtime thing. Those, that area is on lock, and even if they could get over that wall, the enemy spawn and the enemy teleporter is on that side of the base. And on any base... You never want to make it to where any of your allies have to run past the enemy on get here to get into the fight, that is. So very briefly, as you guys can see, the spawn is over here. Let's go through A and we'll go down a little bit. Watersons both is both a very easy and a very hard base to take, just depending on how... So they spawn in here. Well, I guess we spawn in here, but pretend we're the attackers. Uh, they spawn in here, and, and they take the teleporter. Uh, as you can see, the only real question between the teleporter is, are we facing A or are we facing C? So if the enemy came through here, they can go through this little door that Vistar just went through. They can kind of corkscrew around here to the left, and then they can get to the C point trip back. So from right here, if you look, C point is to our left, straight ahead, I'm shooting are the stairs that lead to B, and right across the way, over these rocks, is the platform and the underground access to A. So with this, oh, hey, there's a bad guy. Oh, that's you. That's all I have, medics. Yeah, he's dead. So from this position here, we have a, a we have a dominant like outlook on all th on three of the four points on the base and this is one of the reasons why this base is hard to take if the enemy does not take the teleporter and just funnel straight into a easy pc if the enemy has any kind of cohesion goes through the teleporter they come out here and they have a wealth of options they can go this way and just flank our defense of a uh, through any number of ways by either going up those stairs into b or going through here and then from this room, over to our right, is where the A-point building is, or they can just go up, and now they're in B-point, completely bisecting our lines between B and, and C. So Who this is the the rest? Yeah, here it comes. Oh, good. This is also a pretty gnarly base for an enemy bastion to be also be attacking us at, so because you just have to stay in the point rooms, you can't, there's not as much room to maneuver. Um, so my main point here when talking about the avenues of attack uh, is that when you are defending this base, or sorry, when you are attacking this base and you see that there there's a bunch of blueberries or a bunch of platoon farming them at A and they just cannot get through odd wave point, A point, you need to start thinking about fire team, the fire team spades area. Because if, I, if it were me, I would start diverting the platoon through that teleporter and starting to flank B and A. So, at every base, you just need to look and ask yourself, where are the blueberries, where are our pop, where could their pop go that could counter us? Now, the squad is full. Do we have any uh, volunteers to just open up a second? I'll do it. Lindira, you were first, so you can do it. First to join, that is. You can just type in it. You can just type 
or you can just type in SKL Public Platoon, and now I'm going to talk in Platoon chat. I'm going to balance out the squads real quick. Sorry, not SKL Public Platoon, SKL Leadership Training. <laughs> Did you guys know the mass money can't damage Bastion hard points? If that had been reach. Thank you. All right, now, so so you ask yourself in this situation, what, I, and this is just an, a question to the floor, what, what would you guys do in the situation where you have to defend Watersons? I've already given you a situation where a point is being farmed, we have blueberries or friendly members of our put, and now you start to think to yourself, they could be taking the teleporter and threatening B and C. You know, what, what, are, what are good ways to stop this? And there's no one answer here, just, you know, well, well, give me some thoughts. Can you repeat the question? So, I'm, here's, the, here's the scenario. We are attacking Watterson's Redemption. We have all four points, and currently, Blueberries are over at A point right now, or some members of your platoon farming them out of their spawn. You start to think to yourself, because you've attended my trainings, and you try to you know anticipate what the enemy might do, okay, they're going to go to Fireteam Spades Waypoint at some point through the teleporter, how, what are some suggestions that you all might have to preempt this? Like, well, what, what are some ways to stop this from happening? We can put down maybe some uh, people-controlled anti-personnel turrets to dig in around that area. That's not bad. Uh, oh, uh, conversely, some uh, some Spitfires and or recon darts just to kind of give you some... or if they start to spawn into their teleporter, but they, a lot of the times they will be moving quick. Uh, let's go ahead and make it be of use here and get on D-point. I don't want to not participate. There you go. If Anyone have any other thoughts? If we don't have air problems, I would set up between. I would set up between B and C on the uh, upper level, where the yep. stairway down is. Yeah, and that's a good idea. That that's generally speaking, if you don't have very many resources in your platoon, that is the best thing to do. If there is already a farm going on in A, and you feel like blueberries are holding all right. Maybe disperse your platoons between B and C, because uh, the D point is the most secure of the points here. You really only have to worry about light assaults or infills getting back here, so I wouldn't even put a full squad here. Maybe just a volunteer set on D point, or maybe this is the point that you put Spitfires down on. But you could say you just put Alpha Bravo on B and Charlie uh, Delta on C, and just, just try to disperse their pop as they come through Although most yeah, times I it like seems that, that uh, the ledge between B and C because you have control. The same as when you have control defending on those rocks. Yeah, and then you could uh, you could add to that if you have say a free anvil. You can anvil someone here. I'll, let, let me let me show you. I'm, I'll go in over here. Come come with me, please. And none of these are right answers. All of these are just tools that you, for you to consider, depending on the situation. If the TR or the NC do not have air superiority and you're trying to attack the base, a pretty good uh, and kind of cool, like, slash fun option is to drop a big, fat Cobalt uh, battle bus right here with an anvil. Get, you have a Cobalt bus literally blocking the stairwell, have gunners on it, have some engineers on it, and it literally just forms a barricade. Because remember, when we went through the teleporter, they come out either right there or right there. So a Cobalt bus will just completely pin them into their teleporter. Yeah. That's the also safe from C4 players, too. Yeah, this is a perfectly base to have two scout ends with Cobalts on it. Yeah, and, and this is just one of the one of the m many bases where weaving in some kind of armor strategy can definitely be of use. But it's it's kind of like the router thing. If you don't have anyone comfortable in, like you know, a cobalt bus or or, or or spawning their cobalt bus or gunning for a cobalt bus or an ant or whatever, then it's not something you should do. Conversely, and what I like to do on these bases because I'm a big router guy, I like to just plop a router right here on C point. Because this is the most distant point from A, and if our blueberries are funneling in through Sundays around D to stop them at A, popping a router right here on C just creates a nice fork where we spawn out here, defend C and B, and the blueberries are on A, maybe one squad's helping them just, right? You just kind of have a nice 
flank on on if they try to push for B, then we have A and C, and we just we flank them. Not creosis, it's fine. But thank you. Yeah, but the other way is the same thing. If this base you are attacking and they overpop you, you can go. You can actually leave. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and th and this is also. Yeah, and this is definitely one of those bases where I would say, like, if you can't make it work, no big deal. Like, this is a stronghold base, and stronghold bases are supposed to not be, you know, easy to take. Try at it, you know, give it your best try, experiment with some strategies, and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Just redeploy elsewhere. No big deal. Come back later. Um, now, does anyone have any questions specifically about Watterson's Redemption, either attacking or defending it? We, we went over a lot of uh, attacking it. Examples here, mainly just because I feel like defending it is easy, but I can go over more detail if I want to regarding defending. I think I'm pretty good. Cool, cool, cool. Now, another important base that we can go to check out real quick, and we'll just check out, a, a, we'll check out one more, and then if anyone has any requests for us to check out one, we'll go check it out, but let's go check out... Hell Canyon Chemical, because this is arguably one of the more important bases on the map. And we'll hit that U key, we'll redeploy over the Pell Canyon. Put a beacon down for each squad, so if, in case there is any overpop. Hey, uh, can I make a request for now that's like, not base specific, but it's like continent specific? For us me? Yeah, sure. Uh, so say you could, please can't think you get to defuse a tool, where do you go to find various uh, re reclaimable vehicles on Esmir? Uh, I know a lot of them can be found around Frere Amp and between Cerro and Genudine Gardens, but that's about the extent of my knowledge. Oh, uh, because uh, Waspy told me about uh, some around Ultra and Eli in the, uh, like, out of the uh, X's. Neutral yeah, it's certainly possible. I've not really messed with that at all, so it's not uh, not my wheelhouse. But I, I've seen them around Cerro and around Frere. Oh, yeah, there's actually a cab going on here. Let's let's get them off real quick. You know, I'm, I'm gonna go get a tank real quick just because I want to trap the tool I got. Cool, cool. All right. So for defense, as you guys kind of just, you know, live did, it, it, this base is actually pretty easy to defend uh, without an overpop. It, real quickly, just follow me back to the spawn room, and I, I want to go over a few things regarding this base. It's actually kind of awkward to get back to the spawn room from here. Uh, I kind of forgot. I usually just redeploy. There we go. Well, I found so the this, this base will come under attack often. And from if you send your platoon here, you'll spawn in and you'll look. And the enemy can have Sundays in some pretty weird locations. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just mark some and some random things. Uh, platoon or yeah, Alpha Waypoint is a weird Sunday spawn. I've seen the enemy spawn that before. The idea there is not so much to spawn and get to the point, but it's to spawn and get to the rocks uh, right right next to the waypoint and kind of kill us as we come out of the spawn. Um, Sunday Garage here is a popular one. Sunday Garage here is a popular one. My personal favorite is that you can put a Sunday up in the rocks right at Fire Team Clubs up to the north. Oh, oh, sorry, you're right, right, right. You have platoon there now. Yeah. Yes, platoon, Bravo, and Alpha. I will do, yeah, I'll do Alpha. So Alpha is the rock one I was talking about. Bravo is one of the spots, or one of the Sunday garages. I'll just cycle Bravo. The other Sunday garage right there. And then my personal favorite spot for this base is up to the north, right where Bravo Waypoint is now. You can park a Sunday there, and if you deploy in it, you can drop down a gap in the rocks to get back north of it. So, with all that in mind, the best way to defend this base, depending on what the pop is, is just follow me out. You kind of just want to get to the A point as quickly as possible while not being seen as much as possible, so you kind of just hug as many corners as possible. Drop down, and now you have plenty of cover from the building and the rocks on the left, and just right here on the right is the, is the triple stack itself. 
And let's actually get on point. Yeah, and this is one of the bases where the A point is not as important as the buildings adjacent to it. So if you're actually leading your platoon to defend this base, you would want to take the first triple stack we came into where I'm at right now. You would not go into the A point itself right now unless you're just literally in the last 20 seconds. You would go up the stairs, clear out any routers, any beacons on the second floor, and then... Once all of that's good down, you come through here, and you just have the platoon jump down right through his gap and just crash the point from above. So that at least one of the buildings you know is clear, you crash it, and then you immediately go into the second building and clear. On this base, the positions adjacent to the are more important than the point. Uh, if they have spawns here, if they have beacons here, if they have these balconies, and us while we're down, the, the point's not going to do us any favors here. Now, conversely, attacking this base, same thing. Uh, you want to hold the triple stacks adjacent to the A point. You don't really need anyone on the A point. I will often put two squads in each in each of the triple stacks, or three squads in whatever base or whatever triple stack has a router on it. This is also a pretty good base for a citadel shield. Uh, I can drop one, I'm not going to drop one, but if, if I did drop one, you can pretty much cover this entire area right here for this balcony over here, right here, be able to shoot either the roof right there, that balcony right there. And with a Citadel Shield covering our sharpshooters, it really makes their options for attack very awkward. So let me go over that awkward attack real quick with you guys. Let's get back to the spawn room. I'm just going to go ahead and redeploy. If this is, if they have a lot of pop, and if they ha and or if they have a citadel sh shield down, all right. So I'll wait for everyone to get here real quick. But I'm in, in the spawn room. So you spawn in, you see a citadel shield down, or you see a ton of enemy pop. Basically, the only viable method here is that they've kind of given you only one good move, and that move is to hook a left out of the spawn and take a very awkward approach to the point. You basically have to go through the rocks here, and you kind of just have to avoid their sharpshooters, their armor, whatever they might have there. Just don't get, don't give them any lines of fire on you. And then from here, you have options. You can jump up onto these rocks and drop down straight onto the A point, or you can just keep going wide, maybe kill whatever Sundays in that A point garage, or not A point, but garage, and then pop down right here. And from here you have options. Put beacon down right here, but not now, not actually, but you would have your squads put beacons down here, so they would have to awkwardly show themselves. And you can either hook a left and play the real long game and just go hunt Sundays and or get into that northern uh, triple stack where they're not expecting you. Or, if you feel like you can, you just crash straight into this triple stack right here like we did before. Does anyone have any questions so far about attacking or defending Pelican and Chemical? I know I'm going over some of this stuff pretty quick, but I'm trying not to take too much of your all's time. Very straightforward. Mm. I just wanted to add something, if you're fighting here, obviously actual squad lead, those round barrel things are all climbable. So be advised there will, some, will be some infiltrators up Yeah, yeah, this, this base has a lot of levels to it, like a lot of uh, different heights, uh, elevations to it. The, this is just one of those weird things to where I would just not suggest people be on the roof of this router, or of this uh, triple stack, unless we have a Citadel Shield or an over pop up because they have height advantage of you over here in the rocks. But if you have a Citadel Shield down, then you can re the roof. Uh, same thing with those, like the what, like what Lindira was saying. A lot of weird things you can climb up on. Yeah, this base has a lot of variables to it, which is why some of the best ways to either attack or defend this base is to just, just simplify things. A router or a citadel shield or an overpop si simplifies things. If we have a citadel shield down and we have and or we have an overpop here, we know that the only viable strategy that the that they have left to them is what we just did go to the right. So if you have that citadel shield down, have that overpop, 
or have that router, you just need to look to the south because that's where they're going to be coming from if they have any kind of all. If they don't have any cohesion, they're just going to be coming from this building down here or they're just going to keep trying to drop down from the original spots we tried to attack from and they'll just get shot down. So I think that's the last base we're going to go over today. Um, if it, does anyone have any questions about Pell Canyon Chemical or about Esamir in general? We can start talking about just Esamir, the map, if you all want. Nope, no questions. Everyone, everyone understands Esamir pretty well. Yep. I will say that with this newest patch, uh, the southern warp gate is much stronger than it was prior, but it's still a pretty hard warp gate to play on. Uh, in the situation we're on right now, let's just go ahead and look at the map real quick. This is the situation given to us. Uh, we're very far away from starting the alert. Uh, the TR does not look any real closer to starting the alert, even with that bastion up. And the NC is very much on the back foot. So in this situation... We, we would be wanting to attack the TR somewhere. Um, if this was my platoon and we were actually playing, I would probably defend Eli Forest, go into Sprawl, and then hit Terran BL4. Uh, yeah. and, if, and if Terran BL4 went through, then hit Echo Valley with everything we got to try to get that Jordan Amp station cut off. Um, pretty much on any of the maps, you want to look for cutoffs. Cutoffs are the, easy, are, the, are the best way to get some kind of positional advantage over the enemy. Um, so, yeah, like I said, Sprawl Oasis, Minute Cap, Terran BL4 is a hard nut to crack, but if you can bring it down, you can bring it down. And at some point in the future, if you can tackle Ymir Containment, tackle it. A lot of the times, I like to just run up against the containment sites and then put offensive requests on them to just see if Blueberries might be able to just ghost cap them randomly or something. Um, from here, if the NC starts doing better, we have a, the pro the problem with Pell Canyon Chemical, and one of the reasons that we went we went over it today is because I think it's one of the most important bases, whether you are on the southern warp gate or on the northern warp gate, because we are facing off on the map Pell Canyon versus Madison's. Madison's is significantly harder to take than Pell Canyon Chemical. So the NC has a springboard there, knowing that that base is safe. That at any time during the alert, they can attack Pell Canyon from there. So we need to know how to defend Pell Canyon because we all, all yeah oh, oh we got enemies enemy here. Yeah, so the NC knows that Watersons is fairly safe, so they will constantly attack Pell Canyon throughout the throughout the alert if we are on this warp gate. Conversely, if you are or we if we are the NC warp gate then we will be attacking Pell Canyon constantly because it is one of the easier bases to take. Comparatively to Watersons, I mean, look at the NC. Like, what do the NC do here? Like, they are they going to take an, attack Anvari Containment? I doubt it. The rinks, uh, the, the rinks already proven not to uh, succeed. You can go from Stillwater Watch all the way up to north in the Vidar Observation Site, and they probably will at some point. But from there, Grey Heron Shipping is one of the most frustrating bases on, on take. Uh, you know, that and not, I suppose. But the NC do not have a wealth of options here. Either they are going to have to bash their heads against something or attack Pell Canyon Chemical, which, which is much easier to take than Grey Heron or, uh, you know, a rink with a 24 ATR oh, pop up on it. Oh, yep, got on the A point. Oh, yeah, he's on a point. Good job, good job. Yeah, but I mean, this is what I'm talking about. They're, 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 even even while we've been here talking about Pale Canyon, they are trying to attack it. <laughs> Maybe. But they, they ain't getting this base. They might as well go somewhere else. Uh, they actually, yeah, quite a few of them dropped in, so, yeah, start repel. To use. Oh, this should be fun. Let's actually uh, let's actually fight here for a minute. We can kind of. I said it, but if your holding points max, I'm sorry, uh, 
heavies and, and mags are pretty much it. All the other stuff, they're cool, but if you're really trying to hold a point, those two. Yeah, yeah, you definitely want, and that, that's generally speaking what I just tell any platoon leads, like, you want to encourage a high ratio of medics. I mean, like, sure. they have medics and heavies. Well, platoon platoon right right now. Rigid, but if you were to actually try to be rigid, then you gotta go pretty much all medics, engineers, maybe you can make max, uh, heavies, and medics, and then if you maybe one engineer, you don't want to. Just keep fighting for this triple stack. Remember, the, tri the triple stack's more important. They know it. We got up skinny through a rice grenade. It goes in, I gotta go. Uh, yeah, see see we're almost done anyway. This this fight kind of stalled it, but we're about done. Yeah, well, uh, good luck. All right. Yep. Yeah, see, simple, easy. Uh, they'll and this is what I'm talking about. They will constantly attack here. Uh, and so Pale Canyon, knowing the ins and outs of it, very important. They probably have spawns up, uh, and will probably keep attacking. But I'm not going to waste any more of y'all's time. Just just bear in mind. You want to make your guys run as little as possible if they die. You want medics to res them. You want routers to give them a uh, closer spawn. You want beacons to bring them in over the overpop. All of that, making your your platoon run less, is way more important than having a good KDA or having, um, you know, like a good tactics or good armor or whatever. Like, get, making sure your guys are going into the fight will win you bases. And that's the lesson for today. Uh, thank you all for joining me. If anyone has any final questions, feel free to DM me either here or on Discord. But otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and let you all go and join the fight for SMR. Uh, see you planet side. Thanks, pal. We appreciate it. Have a good one. I'm going to go ahead and disband. Uh, I think there's two platoons up, so just have fun. Welcome.